Hello there, ladies and gentle germs. Bet you've been wondering where the fudge six I have been. I'm back in Australia. So, you know, I know I talk about my mental health a lot and, you know, I was really struggling in isolation in Los Angeles, not being able to see anybody and, you know, living alone and, and, and all of that. And with my birthday coming up, my mum was like, enough is enough and, uh, and booked me a flight back to Perth. So I thought I'd do a vlog about my experience traveling halfway across the planet during a pandemic. So that's what this is. So my home state, Western Australia, has very strict border control in place. I'm lucky that I'm a citizen so I could fly to Australia. Um, we have some pretty stringent quarantine laws in effect at the moment as well. So, you know, it was a nightmare finding a flight uh, to Australia. You know, Expedia is pretty useless at this point. Um, I had to go through uh, two different carriers, I guess, airlines to get my flight from Los Angeles to Sydney and then Sydney to my hometown. I booked my flight, I, I prepped, I got my hand sanitizer, my masks, wipes, gloves, everything. I packed up, I got both of my pets put in uh, with sitters and they're happy as can be. I miss them so much. But yeah, so I got on my flight to Sydney and first up, LAX practically abandoned. All the stores were closed except for a few food outlets. There were next to no people there. Everyone was wearing masks. Everyone was socially distancing. They had um, taped off the seats uh, waiting for the airlines. Um, everyone was really good about it. When we boarded the flight, they, uh, they gave us little sachets of hand gel. And one of the lovely air hostesses uh, said that there was a spare row a little while back if I wanted to lie down and sleep. So I moved and I sanitized the three seats there and I laid down. But I mean, I don't think the plane was even a third of the way full. There was enough room for just about every passenger to have a full row of seats to themselves. So I just passed out, mask and all. <laughs> and slept for most of my flight. You know, the staff were all wearing masks. They were all very safe. I washed my hands, the prerequisite 30 seconds every time I went to the bathroom. And um, when I landed in Sydney, I think this is the interesting thing. When I landed in Sydney, even though I was a citizen, um, we went through a whole vetting process at the airport. So straight off the plane, we were all directed um, down the hallway and there was this whole loop of uh, doctors and like government representatives to go through questioning, ask us if we had any symptoms, ask us if we'd been in contact with anybody who had been confirmed having COVID. They checked our temperature, checked our citizenship status because there were obviously some people coming in on work visas or coming in to visit family. And yeah, they gave us a whole bunch of paperwork with what was expected of us. And upon arriving, every last person on that flight was escorted to mandatory two-week quarantine at a hotel. So I was taken to the Intercontinental Sydney Hotel on a bus. Um, once we'd gone through that vetting process, we were directed onto buses and they had some of our military police there to help us with our bags and load them onto the buses. And then there was social distancing in effect on the buses as well. They had seats taped out, so none of us were sitting next to each other. And yeah, they let us know where we were heading before the bus took off. We got to the hotel. There was like a very efficient check-in system where they let us off the bus a few at a time. And we went and filled out a form, answered some questions, and, um, and then were escorted to a room where I was essentially locked in for two weeks. So we weren't allowed to leave the room. Food was provided at 8 a.m., 12 p.m. and 5 p.m. every day. They just left it out the front. You could specify any allergies you had or food intolerances, which I thought was pretty cool. I mean, the food wasn't amazing, but it wasn't bad. The room was a good size. There was a bathtub, which was nice. We had free Wi-Fi. I didn't have too hard of a time in my two week mandatory quarantine. We weren't given room keys. So they let us into the room, but there was security on every floor and uh, to make sure that we couldn't leave the premises until our quarantine was up, which I thought was fair enough, honestly. I just, I just hung out for two weeks. I slept a lot. I read a lot of manga. I watched a bunch of TV. I played Nintendo Switch. I learned a couple TikTok dances. Uh, I FaceTimed my friends and my family who were very excited that I was in the same time zone. Got to explore the Sydney culinary scene via Uber Eats. 
Um, I think for me, being naturally a little bit agoraphobic and having social anxiety and and being a homebody already, it was easier for me to be locked in a room for two weeks. I can imagine some of my friends, <coughs> Rachel's custard, <coughs> would have difficulty, but it was actually quite nice. I didn't really, I even managed to get a tape done while I was there. My girlfriend, Mara, FaceTimed me and, and read the other lines. And so, you know, it was, it was tricky, but we, we managed it, we managed it. And the nurses were really nice. They called to check up on me every day, asked me about my symptoms, see how I was doing. They had mental health professionals, therapists and psychologists that were available on call for any of us who were struggling with being isolated, which I thought was very cool and very much needed. Uh, there were two days of mandatory testing. I was tested on my second day and uh, a lovely, a lovely doctor and some healthcare professionals, you know, with their wheelie cart came by my room and stuck a thing up my nose. And uh, they were very, very kind about it. It's a very spicy experience. I did not enjoy that. And they let me know my results a couple days later, which were obviously negative. And then they tested me again on my 10th day, right before my release, um, and gave me a bunch of information about my release and checked in on whether I was getting picked up, whether I was staying in Sydney or whether I was moving on to another state or city in Australia. It was towards the end that I was struggling. So towards the end I was having difficulty sleeping, uh, I was having a bit of insomnia, a bit of anxiety the last couple of days of isolation. And the day before I left, I was so anxious that I wouldn't make my flight back home, that I barely slept. I had a crushing headache um, from not sleeping and from stress. So I pretty much just stayed up for most of the night and then rolled out of bed at sort of 6.30 a.m. and trundled my way out. And even though it was so cold, Fresh air has never smelled sweeter, I swear to God. And then I trundled off to the domestic airport and uh, caught my flight back to my hometown. It was very jarring to be on the flight to my hometown because one, there were a bunch of people not wearing masks. A bunch of people were, but a bunch of people weren't. And for those of you who aren't in Australia, most of well, my home state at least is pretty much COVID free. The only cases we have are in hospital, um, which is why our border closures are so strict. So that was really jarring for me, having been in Los Angeles and been under sort of self-isolation and stay at home orders for the last, I don't know, what is it, six months now? Um, that was very, that made me feel very uncomfortable. The requirements for entering my home state were you had to apply online for what's called a good to go pass, which uh, approves you for travel to either Western Australia or Tasmania. This application is no joke. It is no joke. The amount of supporting paperwork I had to give to prove that I was a citizen, that my family lived here, um, everything from my birth certificate to my passport details, to a copy of my license, uh, a supporting letter from my therapist saying that it was detrimental to my mental health to continue isolating alone, which it was. A letter from my mum saying that I was going to be staying with her. A letter from me saying how I was going to, like, with a self-isolation quarantine plan for when I reached Perth because there was a recent outbreak in Sydney and that had just happened while I was in quarantine. So they had tightened the restrictions while I was in quarantine in Sydney. And I, I consider myself very lucky that I got to do that mandatory quarantine in Sydney because I left with a police clearance and a medical clearance uh, after doing my two tests and my two weeks of quarantine. So that was really helpful. It took me six attempts at filing for my good to go pass to get approved to travel into the state. That's how strict it is. I'm an Australian citizen. I was born and raised here. That I live with my parents when I'm home. My mail is delivered here. It took me six attempts to get approved. And to give you some idea of how serious the state is about allowing people in and about this approval, right before we landed, there was an announcement over the intercom and the air host, the air host, he said, if you do not have an approved good to go pass, you will be detained at the airport and sent back to Sydney at your own expense. So we take it very seriously. And as a result, nobody here in Perth has to wear a mask. So, you know, it might sound a bit outrageous, but it does work. It was nuts. I landed in Perth and my mum and my stepdad, who I was going to be staying with, were waiting for me 
and uh, it was a similar process to landing in Sydney where I had to go through a bunch of interviews and go through a very specific immigration process. I had to sit and answer a bunch of questions about where I would be staying, who I would be staying with, provide a number, um, and basically confirm all the details that they had received from my good to go pass. So they referenced my approved past. I had to have my pass scanned because it's in an app in my phone. And then they were going to send me to another hotel <laughs> for another two weeks and I whipped out my police clearance and my medical clearance from Sydney and said, I've, I've just come out of two weeks of quarantine in Sydney after arriving from Los Angeles. Can you please let me quarantine at home? And they checked my paperwork and they said, okay, since you have this clearance, you're approved to isolate at home. So I had a mandatory swab up my nose again at the airport. And um, only my mum and my stepdad could pick me up because they're the ones that I'm staying with. And I came home to my parents' house and I have been self-isolated in my bedroom for almost two more weeks. So it's like a month of isolation. Um, the cops came by to check in on me my second day of self-isolation and uh, informed me that I was permitted to move about the property since my test results were negative from the airport, um, provided I wear a mask and practice social distancing with my family. And, uh, and that's... That's what I've been doing. My mum put together uh, an isolation treat tray for me and my little brother came by and set up an Xbox for me. And um, he's been working on collecting some stuff for streaming so that I can stream while I'm here uh, until I come back for work. But yeah, even though I can't hug my family or hold them yet, it's, it's good to just know that I'm home. It's been really nice. So part of my paperwork with self-isolating at home in Perth was that I was required by law to go to a COVID testing site, a hospital or an approved site. In this case, it was Charlie's hospital and get tested again on my 11th day, which I did two days ago. So I'll be out of quarantine, provided I have another negative um, in two days. It's, it's gonna be weird though. I went to the hospital to, to get my last test done and I was surprised at how many people were there considering we don't have COVID. Um, and from eavesdropping, I have discovered that here in Western Australia, if you have cold or flu symptoms at all, if you have a cough, if you have a fever, if you have a sore throat, you are required by work or by your school or by your dorm, everyone requires you to then immediately take paid leave off and go and get tested for COVID and you're not allowed to return to work until you test negative and everyone was wearing masks and social distanced and there was antibacterial stuff everywhere so my hands are peeling now because i've got to say after months and months of isolation being around that many people there was like 40 people just sitting waiting to get their tests done was profoundly stressful and i have social anxiety to begin with let alone my first time after really intensive isolation being around so many people who were like all talking and i felt very overstimulated i was like oh this is too much so i'm a bit nervous a bit nervous about coming out of isolation i've been doing nothing i've been in either mandatory two-week quarantine in sydney or self-isolation in perth for the last month my last day of quarantine is uh, Sunday. And then I'm free. And then I can see my family. And I can hug my mum and my brother. And I'm really excited. So I just wanted to let you guys know. Oh, I'm getting emotional. This is a waterproof mascara. Ah! I just wanted to let you guys know what I've been doing and where I've been at. Because uh, I, I know that for those of you that follow me, you're aware that I haven't been in a great place with my mental health. So I just wanted to reassure you that I'm doing good and I'm happy and I'm safe. And I'm people that I love and that love me. If you wanna, hit subscribe. And uh, I, yeah, I love you. And thank you for being here and for supporting me. Always, I love you. Stay happy, healthy and safe.